Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to be taking a look at resizing images dynamically. So you have an image, you upload it to your server and then you want to serve many different sizes of that image. Perhaps you don't know what size image you need at the time of uploading. Rather, you want to create the specific size at the time of consumption. We're going to be using a library called image sharp by six labors. Starting example is pretty simple. So the focus of this video will be how you can take their example and extend it to a cloud provider of your choosing and what kind of things you can configure. Don't forget if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description. I did preparation for this video during my stream. So if you would like to tune in live, the link to my Twitch is in the description. Don't forget to check out my C Sharp course and let's go ahead and get started. So I have uh, two Nougat packages installed. One is six labors image sharp dot web and all the links to everything will be in the description. Here is their GitHub page and here is their starting page. Now, if you click on get started, uh, you will see a page that looks something like this and uh, basically the documentation is a little bit lacking where other things have like get started. So basically you have very minimal information to go off. This is their setup, which is what we're going to do, which is relatively easy. And then you do something like this and you know, you get the appropriate format image. So this is a very nice interface to work with. And then you can integrate it with the cloud. Now for their integration with the cloud, they have integrations with Azure and AWS. I'm going to specifically show you how to integrate it with Google Cloud, but the way that I'm going to do it, you're basically going to be able to figure out how to do it with any other cloud provider. So let's close that for this code over here. What we're going to do is we're just going to open the editor so we can scroll through the code. So that's the first package over there. The other package is Google Cloud Storage, and that's specifically to integrate with the Google Cloud bucket. All right. If you have the Digital Ocean, Linode, you're going to have a, your own thing that you're going to build or your own package that you're going to download. So collapsing this uh, again, both of these packages are over here. Program CS, a minimal and then image.jpg. It's a nice little forest that we want to go ahead and display. So you can see it's a pretty big image. Uh, first of all, let's come back over here, go through the minimal setup. I'm just going to grab these two things, whack them over here, take uh, the use image sharp place it maybe before my endpoints, add image sharp, that's going to need to go on the builder services, we're going to import all the relevant stuff, get rid of these methods, uh, run the application. So dot watch, there we can see the hello world image dot JPEG is not going to show straight away because unless you have all the relevant formatting, it's not going to display it because I don't have use static files enabled. As soon as it starts to recognize the query as this configuration for how you want to display the image, then it's going to go ahead and well, display the image for you. So two minutes set up, download the package, add this stuff, it's going to add caching. So the first time that you load, it's going to take a little bit of time to load and then it is going to be cached and this is cache folder. So here you can imagine that you can store images locally and then they're going to be stored as a cache locally as well. Perhaps that's not something that you want because the server is going to keep building up memory. Maybe you want to move the cache to the cloud or perhaps you want to move both to the cloud. We're going to go ahead and move both to the cloud and we're going to see how that is done. So first of all, let's head on over to here and we're going to take a look at the SRCs over here. This is basically the process that I went through on stream because there is no documentation around this. So how do I go about doing this stuff, right? If we take a look over here, we will see that when they provide their very minimal sample, they're saying set Azure blob storage image cache. So I go to the source code, I take a look at Azure blob storage cache, and there is also the Azure blob storage image provider. I basically, I take a look at the code and I see, all right, what stuff relates to what I figure it out and then I go ahead and implement it. So if you want to replace the storage of where you're storing images, you're going to implement the iImage provider. If you want to utilize a specific cache, you would implement the iImage cache. We're going to do both. So let's come back over here. I'm going to drop down the solution and we're going to create a public class GCP image provider. This is going to be an iImage provider. Make sure that we implement the interface. Some of the stuff I just went ahead and lifted it. I didn't bother too much with the actual implementations. So for example, like 
is valid request. I found how they do is valid request and they're using some internal service. So I went ahead, just copied that across, take this is valid service over here, place this here. I will need format utilities. So I add a constructor, grab the same format utilities that they supplied over here somewhere. This should bang, take it, place this over here. Global variable, take format utilities, place this over here, remove the this, get display URL. I don't 100% know what that function does, but the interesting function is this get a sync, which is going to give you an image resolver. This is also something that you need to implement. So let's go ahead and implement this public class GCP image resolver. I image resolver, give this a body, give this an implementation. If you're confused about the two classes, the provider, you can think of it, where are the images stored? And how do we find or actually fetch the data for that image? Okay, so provider and resolver. Here, we want to get to a point where we can return an instance of this image resolver, which is going to <laughs> resolve an image, uh, not much to say there. You then have the processing behavior and the match. So for the match, uh, somewhere at the bottom here, they're doing some smart stuff. I'm not going to be doing any of that. I will just take the processing all behavior over here. I'll make sure that I assign it here. And for the match, we're just going to take the context and we're going to say for the request, if the path starts with segment and we're going to say if it starts with image, we're going to say try to apply this provider over here. In order to interact with GCP storage, we're going to go to builder services and I'm just going to add a singleton over here. We're going to have a service provider and you find the storage, storage, storage client and you just create it. OK, this is going to return you a storage client class. I will not be able to copy it because uh, mouse sensitivity is too high. Let's go ahead, type it out, uh, inject it into this class format things a little bit. And then in the get async, we will say, because this is only going to execute when it matches, we're going to take the value of the path, we will do something really simple and split it by slashes. These are going to be the individual parts. And then the image name should be in the second part, right? So it's going to be slash image slash and then the image name. So I'll take this position to the client. And by the way, nothing is stopping you from incorporating the bucket name into this URL schema as well. I'm just not going to do it, right? So I want to go ahead and get an object. I'll use the asynchronous method the bucket name. I'm just going to hard code it. So RC image sharp demo and then the name. So image name semicolon on the end await over here. This is going to give me an object. If the object is not found, I think this is going to throw, but the object should be there because it's a demo. Otherwise, you're going to need to handle it yourself. So the object over here has the name of object, and <laughs> that just makes it a little bit hard to supply it to this image resolver, which is going to try to read this object, right? So object, this right here is a system class object. This object over here, if we open this up, this is in this namespace. So let's go ahead and place this here and create a field. This got imported very nicely with an alias over here. Nice. That means I can remove this bit here. Now we need to return two pieces of a metadata. The first one is task from result. We will say new image metadata and this is a struct. I will need to supply two things last write time UTC and content length. Generally, whatever object you're storing, this information is going to be present there. So whatever date this was updated at, so value. And then on the object here, there will be size, which is of different type, but I can convert it to long without any problems. I'll just bang it here as well. Format this a little bit. Make sure that I actually take this object and supply it here. For uh, the open read stream, uh, the way that the GCP thing is doing it is a little bit weird, but it can still make sense. So we will create a memory stream, we will reset the position and we will return the memory stream. And we are going to use the client. So the client will have to make its way into this uh, GCP image resolver. So we'll just take the client. Supply it as a parameter, put things on new lines, take the client. The client is the thing that is basically going to do the downloading. So instantiate it, 
I'll take the client. There is a download object async method where the first thing that you supply is the object and then the destination stream. So loading everything into the destination stream, which is this MS, I'm resetting the position because it's going to write to it and then you want to put it right back to the beginning. So when you return the stream, it's going to be able to read from the beginning and on the outside I've checked it is using a using statement. So this memory stream is going to be disposed of. Potentially another thing that you can do here if you find this weird that you have to create a stream, you can create and inject an HTTP client. You can create a signed URL and download the object via an HTTP request. Okay, that avenue is also open. However, I'm just going to be doing this. So uh, this is the current setup. Uh, the client will have to be propagated here. Cool. I am now going to take the GCP image provider, image sharp. We're going to add a provider. But please note at this point, the previous provider is still there. And what we can do is we can call clear providers Well, <laughs> in order to clear it. Hopefully that's uh, <laughs> clear enough. I'll open up the terminal. Uh, the application should restart. It uh, looks like that is working. If we come back over here, I'll refresh the page that is still there. And that is rendering this image.jpg. If we come back here and I go to the image route slash image, that is going to give us a 404. So one thing I'm realizing is I'm splitting by slashes, but there is this question mark over here. Maybe what can be better is if you use regex, so you will match on context path and then you will say, I want a backslash image a backslash a little bit better. If we put the at at the beginning, you will then want to give it a group image name. The image is up to the question mark, the split that we don't need. There's going to be a match on the end. And if a match is successful, Let's go ahead, take this, pull it up into here. Otherwise, we can return no list. Something hasn't been found on the match over here. We can go to group and you can see that writer is helping me over here to extract this value from there. Uh, careful with the spelling. Uh, let's open up the terminal. This should restart again. If this doesn't work again, perhaps something is terribly broken. So uh, what I like to do at situations like this, I will attach a debugger to this process. And if you're using VS code, you're not going to be able to do this. So I will open image sharp. I will go into the middleware. I'm going to come down to where the actual logic is happening here. And right at the beginning, I'm just going to put a breakpoint, right? I'm going to refresh this and we are well encountering this middleware. So let's see what's happening over here. Uh, the default physical file system resolver is being surfaced here and it looks like it is managing to match this route and well, then it will actually just not be able to find the image and do anything with the image. So what I'm going to do is actually clear the default provider. What you can also do is you can go and find out why it's trying to match it. Maybe you can configure it. I haven't taken a look at it that deeply, but possibly that avenue is open. So here I'm going to detach the debugger because this when this application restarts, uh, the debugger is going to crash anyway. We're going to take this cache. We're going to delete it. Uh, the image we will leave it there. Let's come back over here, give this a refresh. And now you can see that uh, it is actually loading and we should get the is cache again. So even though it is loading the asset from the cloud, it is caching it locally. So the next time that I'm going to try to get this image, it is going to load it locally. So let's just go ahead, delete these two again. We're going to give this a refresh because I've actually deleted the files. It's uh, restarting the application as well. But there you go. Again, uh, the cache should be recreated and the original image is not there. So to conclude this first part of the video where we are capable of storing images in the cloud and then process them through this component, all we need really needed to do is to point where is this stuff being stored and then how can we resolve the incoming route to create this thing that is actually going to download that image. This will be the end of the first part. The second part is going to cover the caching. As you have images locally, what you want to do is pull down an image of specific size. You're going to process it and then store it in the cloud.
Next time the request is going to come around, you're actually going to pull that image straight from the cloud. And Image Sharp actually has some smart things built in around caching, which we will cover in the next video. Nevertheless, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Make sure that you check out Image Sharp for all things images. I think it is the de facto standard. If you would like the source code to this video as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. A very, very big thank you to all of my current patrons supporters, you help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you later.